spirits are still high. So all, all, all good here. Well, they should be high. Uh, first of all, congratulations on a terrific marathon yesterday in Chandler, Arizona. Thank you. Thank you, man. That was great. Great day. <laughs> uh, here you are with a pack of 14 and then it kind of dwindled to 11, I think. And then you go through the, uh, the infamous 20 mile mark mm -hmm. and you're together and going through your mind is I can do this or are you thinking I'm going to risk it? I did a great job most of the race of going, you know, just like turning my brain off, sitting in the back of that pace, you know, that paced first group um, and just like trying to not think about anything, just taking it one mile at a time. Um, but then, yeah, you know, we, get, we got through the half marathon and I think everyone, there was a, like a palpable excitement. Everyone was definitely like, man, we're doing this. We are on pace. Um, this is happening. Um, and then, uh, yeah, over the next probably like seven or eight miles, I started working my way up, up to that, you know, to the, the front of the pack. And I was still feeling all right. I wasn't feeling great. I don't think anyone feels great running that fast, but you feel, you know, you just feel like you can keep going. Um, and then kind of like you said, the, the uh, Frank was the pacer, you know, it was Mason and Frank. And then Frank was the one who went, he made it all the way until 22. Um, and at that point I was kind of right next to him and he, you know, he peeled off. I said, thanks. And it was me. So I, um, you know, I, I, I initially was just thinking to myself, let's just keep this pace honest. You know, like, you know, we can't slow up. We can't let up. We're, 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 we're going and inadvertently unintentionally I ended up actually picking it up um then you know that next that 23rd mile I think was maybe a 450 and I kind of you know half looking back I noticed I was starting to gap everybody and um so it wasn't exactly I didn't really want to be at that point there's there's still a lot of race to go but um and I knew at some point the wheels were going to come off but I just I kind of, it was a do or die decision. I was like, well, I'm here, I'm in the lead and now it's my responsibility to just lean into it and uh, see how far I can go, so. It was interesting that you uh, you did that. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Sammy Wanjuro in, uh, in uh, the World Championships when he, oh, sorry, the uh, Beijing Olympics, I think it was, I might be mistaken, but uh, one of those races, he mm -hmm. took off and it was like, this isn't done in the Olympics. <laughs> right. I think you're right. I think that was Beijing in 08 when he just like ran absurdly fast, um, like right from the gun in like brutal conditions too. I think it was just like what he did was insane. But um, I don't think what I did was quite as impressive, but thank you. <laughs> it just reminded me of it because you took off. It wasn't uh, your typical marathon where uh, yeah. you would split that field open and they went single file after you took off. Uh, how about Noah? Talk about Noah Drotty, uh hanging in there. He uh, started to gain on you uh, one second or two seconds in the last mile and then started <laughs> to fade. It just, I think you took off actually going into the shoot. But uh, talk about Noah Drotty's toughness. Yeah, no, I mean, Noah, I know I've raced Noah plenty of times and I know he is not a guy I want to be anywhere near at the end of a race um, because he is, he is tough as nails. Um, and I think it, it ended up being where I, you know, I got that kind of 10 second gap on the field. And then fortunately we, we both kind of slowly cratered and, you know, felt worse and worse to the same degree. So that gap stayed relatively, you know, even through those last couple miles, but I would be lying if I didn't say, I looked back multiple times in those last couple miles as I was really like maxed out um just really hoping he wasn't getting closer um but yeah Noah is like a, I mean I love racing Noah he's an he's an awesome athlete and an even better guy um so I was really happy you know if there was someone who's going to be right behind it, it, it was him it looked like a couple of old souls it reminded me of like the 70s because he's got the long flowing hair and he gets across the line before he does his technicolor yawn and here you are uh, you're a full-time uh, student, you're a father of two, you're running around 100, 105 miles a week, and you pull this off, you fly in, you fly out the same day. Are you, are you a bit of an old soul that way? Always, yeah, always been, you know, I think it just kind of comes with, I've always loved running, and, you know, part of being a good runner is, uh, you know, just 
making some uh, you know some older person decisions as far as going to bed and you know just like simple things like that so yeah but that's kind of the life I love living um you know my wife is just like me I mean we love crawling into bed at nine o'clock when the girls are asleep um because we love to sleep so yeah just all the <laughs> things it's, just, uh, it's all part of who I am and uh it definitely works for uh training and running all right, so you got into the U.S. Uh, uh, Olympic trials with 213.49 ish, and uh, you, you ran 211.29. So you're under, you're a second under what many countries use as the uh, Olympic standard. You're a minute and a half out of uh, second, second place. You finished sixth. Uh, yeah. Take me through your mindset, last couple miles in that race and the next couple of days after after that after the the olympic trials yeah yeah those were that was a, you know there was a whole lot of different emotions you know during and after that race because you know the time you know it was all that matters is getting top three at the olympic trials i mean that's how it is in the u.s that's how it's always been that's what makes it so special um so of course you know i knew i mean I'm finishing those last couple miles, you know, that course was a meat grinder. So I think everyone was feeling pretty awful. You know, those last final miles, there's still a couple more like big hills you got to get up. Um, but, and I knew I was in the top 10. I didn't know exactly how far into the top 10 I was. Um, but, you know, really the main thing getting me to that finish line as I'm, you know, running, just trying to hold it together was thinking that anything can happen in the marathon. I have no idea who's dropping out in front of me, you know, like maybe someone like collapses and I make up a couple spots. You just never know. So that's what that was what, you know, kind of helped me held me together in those last few miles. And, you know, I saw the clock. It was awesome, you know, being able to run so fast on such a tough course. Um you know, ultimately I knew right away I wasn't top three, but, um, so, I, you know, it is what it is. And then at least I had the silver lining of running, you know, a really great time and, you know, sure. I got the Olympic standard. It didn't mean anything really for me, but, um, it was still really the main question that came out of it afterwards was, all right, I didn't make an Olympic team, but I ran really well on this tough course. Like the first question was, what can I do? on a flat fast course you answered that question beautifully yesterday with a 20859 <laughs> and uh that's faster than anybody ran the, at the trials does how does the usat uh, work with that do you get to be uh, an alternate now if uh, a guy or two gets injured or do i pick from the trials only i believe it still comes from the trials um i'm not 100 percent sure on the rules on that but i think fourth place at the trials will be the alternate regardless I know you're still basking in the glow of uh, a marathon win. You had five thousand um, dollars. You, you ran a great time. Uh, it was a wonderful day. Uh, but uh, what's coming up next for you? Now you're you're a bona fide marathon. Not that you weren't bona fide at two thirteen <laughs> or two eleven, but now you're you're seriously you're in the two O's. What's yeah, I mean, it, it's a whole a whole new world ahead of me now, right? So. Um, you know, definitely going to have some conversations in the next, the next week, as far as, you know, I, my, I, my contract was, you know, running out this year. So we'll kind of see what the, the, the future holds with that. Um, and I mean, really next steps for me um, are going to be kind of taking things back, back to the track, back for a, uh, back to the, the 10 K because, you know, there, there's still another trials to be held on the uh, track so i'd like to get back to my 2016 shape when i was you know also in the the 10k at the u.s trials so that's going to be kind of the focus for the next six months um and then after that you know i'm going to be starting residency program in anesthesia for the next four years um things will you know my life will definitely take another spin another change so we'll see you know, I'm not, I, I don't try to overplan things too far in the future. So I'm just going to see, see what happens when that time comes. But so you're still over 28, you're still in the 28 minutes for the 10,000 meter. Yeah. Uh, yes. So yeah. If that's a benchmark you, you'd want to clear is uh, get into the 27s then. Yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't, I haven't run a track 10K in 
probably three ish years. So um, I'm well overdue for, um, you know, a big PR upgrade there. And I, I'll be very excited to, to take another stab at it because um, I, I, I mean, I don't know what, what others think, but I, I do think there's a lot of, a lot to be gained from these, these, um, you know, long cycles of, of training for 26.2. And I think, uh, I think I'll get a nice little strength boost when I, when I get back on the track. Sub twenty seven thirty at Peyton Jordan. If as long as there as long as there is a Peyton Jordan, right? You know, with everything. But um, yeah, I mean, if I'm gonna go and run a ten k, and I'm, I'd hope to get in as good a shape as possible and try to try to take a stab at that standard. You were running 100, 105 miles a week, according to other media, uh, uh, training for the marathon. How would your uh, training uh, differ for uh, the ten thousand, or would it? Um, oh, it would definitely be a, li a little different for that for this buildup. Um, I probably, you know, for this marathon, I probably I spent actually a better part of two months between 100 and 115 miles a week. Um, which was really good. You know, that was some really solid quality training. I think for the, for the 10 K, we won't focus as much um, on, you know, getting that last 15 to 20 miles. I think running between 90 and 100 miles a week would be more than enough. Um, and then, you know, just those workouts will change a, a little bit. We'll spend, I mean, we I, I, we did one workout on the uh, track for, you know, the, this marathon buildup. So obviously we're going to spend a little more time on, on the, the track, getting a little more speed, speed in the legs. But, um, you know, the, the Coach Fox program is very strength based. So um, I imagine we're still going to do plenty of long tempos, long, long fart licks and good solid long runs. And, uh, you know, that, that's kind of where we uh, make our bread. You know, that's, that's our sweet spot. I like the long runs, more of this old soul business. So do you, do you enjoy uh, the Sunday long run, a good two, two and a half hour solid effort? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, long run is definitely one one of my one of my favorite days of the week. I, I guess yeah, I would say that's probably my favorite day in an average week would, would be long run day. Um, yeah, we pretty much top out around two hours, two hours ten minutes. Um, any longer than that, I don't think I'd look forward to it so much. To <laughs> but uh, yeah, a good hard two hour day when you're you know when we're in the the thick of training is uh, you know those those are some really fun days. Going back to that uh, moment when you took off, you made that decision to take off. I was thinking about uh, the battle in Troy and the characters in the movie Troy, who, you know, you call that your favorite movie. So were you Achilles at that moment or were you uh, uh, Brad, Brad Pitt's character? Brad Pitt is, is Achilles. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you, uh, okay. <laughs> um, who is the other character? The, the, there was, he negotiated the treaty, but uh, who was the uh, Hector? The one Hector, who, Hector, yeah. yes. Oh gosh, well Hector gets you know he gets run down. So I'm gonna say I, I you know if I, if we have to make the correlation there, I you know I'll I'll take my long flowing Brad Pitt uh, Achilles position and say yeah yeah that was me going in for the kill there. And of course it's Brad Pitt. You have to be Brad Pitt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna give me that option. It's always gonna be Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, how about your Christmas? Uh, it's a little bit different this year with the pandemic. You do have uh, a couple of uh, young daughters at home and your wife, of course. Mm -hmm. So, there's the four of you. Do you get to have an extended family thing, or how is it in Pennsylvania? Yeah, I mean, things you know, things here are pretty similar to everywhere else. Everyone's still taking the same precautions. Still, you know going about the holidays a little differently. Um, but, you know, it's, what's really fortunate is this, this is the first time, you know, it lines up where I've got a full fledged running break throughout through the holidays, you know, this doesn't line up too often. So um, it's going to be nice, you know, we're just going to do our thing and, um, you know, maybe get to see some, you know, our immediate family, our, our parents, if, you know, now that I'm, we're, I'm back, maybe get a, get a COVID test or something like after Christmas um, and try to work things out as safely as possible. But uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, we're together and that's, that, that's all that matters. So we're going to be very happy. Yeah, for sure. So uh, 
let's go back to uh, probably only have a few minutes left, I guess. But uh, let's go back to Syracuse for a moment. Oh, Syracuse for your development as a runner. And mm -hmm. um, I think you must have gone to school at least for one year with Justin Knight, fellow Canadian. Yeah, so. for two years, two years. Two years, yeah. Yeah, Syracuse is like, was instrumental in my whole career. I mean, that's where, you know, I went from being a pretty good high school runner to, you know, being under the Coach Fox, Brian Bell system. Um, and they kind of developed me into, you know, into who I am today. Um, and, you know, the culture there, the, the, the spirit of Syracuse and like just the mentality that, that we, we, we harbored there was, has been, you know, something that we still like to talk about and kind of brag about it. I guess if you want to use that, the, that word um, to, to this day. So, um, you know, getting to train with Colin, who was just third in the race yesterday and I'll still my teammate now with uh, Reebok um, and getting to train with guys like Justin again, like Justin was at Syracuse, you know, I, his first year there, I made him work, you know, he, <laughs> he, he wasn't the king his, his, his first year. So that was a fun he was year. Just a night. He wasn't the king. Right, right, right. So, you know, I, I got to show him the ropes for a year, kind of turn his gears a bit. Um, and then, you know, and then 2015 comes and like, you know, he's doing what, what he's known for and he's making us all better. Um, and it was just, yeah. I mean, get, getting that that group of guys training together really set the stage, I think, for, you know, winning a national championship and then setting us up for, you know, a long future in this sport, you know. So at that time at Syracuse, uh, you're talking about long-term vision um, and the Coach Fox and team preparing you for your future. So were you thinking while at uh, Syracuse, I'm going to be a marathon runner one day? So not that long ago. Yeah, it, it wasn't that long ago. And you know what's funny is not really. It was never like my a thought in my head, like, man, I gotta go run a marathon. Um, it was always let's let's bump up and run the 15k championships and run the US 10 mile championships. Those were kind of the first races I did right out of college. Um, because I think it's just a scary, yeah, it, it's a scary move to go from your 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 college 10k and all of a sudden start thinking about running 26 miles um but yeah so i can't say i'm someone who had been dreaming of running the marathon right out the gate but um i i as i moved up and then i ran a half marathon and you know i just i really found my calling the longer that 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 race got um you know, I just gotten, you know, there, it becomes as much of a psychological game as, as a physical one. And I just really thrived on being out there grinding, pushing, you know, and just trying to do that longer than those guys around me. So, yeah, I mean, get, getting to the net, getting to the marathon has been a pretty natural progression. You know, like, like once I got to, to the roads, I kind of did know I was going to end up there, but there was no rush. That's all. Okay, so final sort of thought, uh, a general one, uh, American marathoning looks uh, good again. Uh, right back in the days of Ritzenhain and Hall and, and Shea, and of course he passed away in, in a race, but uh, in a few others, there was a bit of a, a little bit of a gap. There was Rupp and there's still Rupp. But uh, now it looks like uh, there's a bit of a surge again. I think, I think it just goes to show like, you know, that this, this it's moving forward it, it, it it's always moving forward um you know th there might be some stagnations here and there but um you know there's a lot of guys who work really hard and really want to run these times and then when you combine that with opportunities like this like like the marathon project getting put on by josh cox and ben rosario and matt helbig um you know like providing us with this this once in a lifetime opportunity you know perfect flat course per pasters perfect conditions i i mean it if you build it, they will come. And, you know, that's pretty much exactly what happens. So I think um, U.S. marathoning is, is, is in a good spot. And I think we still have a little ways to, to, to go, but I think that there's no reason why, you know, as long as we're out there kind of doing our thing together, that, that we're not going to get those last few minutes. Oh, yeah, actually, I lied. I, I do have sort of another thought, and uh, I'd be remiss not to bring it up. So I might throw the question in front of that answer that you just gave. 
But uh, talk about the <laughs> the uh, the marathon project with Josh, Matt, and and Ben putting that together. Uh, first of all, uh, what a great uh, idea and event, and and the way they pulled it off with David Katz doing the measuring and all the media got on it, which was really cool. And then, do you think there will be um, more of that sort of thing going forward? The Americans had nothing to lose, so you went out and ran hard not tactically and the Canadians had a trials basically yeah so what do you what do you think you think that'll be a thing going I, forward I think I think obviously the pandemic has has created a need for these kind of grassroots op opportunities and it's really cool to see the sport and you know those who are passionate about the sport creating them um I think going forward, it's, you know, it's, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they continue to happen because I, I mean, I can only imagine how, how much has to go in to putting this race together. And I know Ben and Josh and Matt, I know they've probably been killing themselves for the last three months um, just to get every detail right on this. And I don't know if that's something like everyone's willing to do every year at multiple times for multiple events, but I I do think um, I do think we will see more more like like small volume events like this happening. Just probably not as much as we're seeing right now. Well, good stuff. Well, listen, uh, congratulations again for yesterday. Uh, thank you for this today. Uh, enjoy your Christmas with the, with the girls. Thank you so much. I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Well, Merry Christmas to you. And Same thank you. to you. Ha happy holidays. Again, thank you so much for, for having me on. It's really an honor to get to, you know, that people want to talk about this and have me on. So thank you very much. You're welcome. All the best. Awesome. All the best. <laughs>